Hey, what's up folks? It's me, Mr. Wickham. And since we're studying World War I right now, I thought I would put together um, a few books and a few movies that maybe you would want to check out. Um, totally up to you. Uh, let's see here. The Great War, The War to End All War. Let's start with a couple books. I'll give you four book recommendations that are out there if you like to read that deal with World War I. The first one is War Horse. War Horse is by Michael Morpurgo. Um, and it's from the point of view of this horse, Joey, who was purchased by the army for service in World War I in France. And his previous owner, Albert, is trying to get him back. So Albert is going to join the war and look for his horse, Joey. This is an easy read, and it's going to lead to a movie um, in 2011 and a stage version, you know, that's happening right, well, not right now, but a stage version that you could be seeing. The second book is Harlem Hellfighters. The Harlem Hellfighters is one of the most famous uh, regiments ever in American history. However, most people don't even know about them. The Harlem Hellfighters were an all-black infantry regiment starting in World War I, and it's they spent over 191 days in frontline trenches, and that is more than any American unit. Um, they also suffered the most losses of any American unit with over 1,500 casualties. This is a beautifully illustrated collection of free verse poems that introduces readers to the Harlem Hellfighters. This third book uh, my wife actually read and recommended to me, and it's called Lovely War by Julie Berry. And basically think of it like this. What if Greek gods had influence over the events of World War I? This book is basically uh, romance plus fantasy plus history, and the school library journal rates this book as seventh grade and up, and this book is great for fans of Ruta Sepetis. Um, so if you've heard of that author, you might like this book as well. And then the last book I have for you here is Leviathan by Scott Westerfeld. It's actually the first book in a trilogy series. This is a fast-paced adventure story set in an alternative version of World War I that follows the son of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, Alec, and Darren, a Scottish girl that dreams of joining the British Air Service. Common Sense Media gives gives this book five out of five stars and recommends this for 12-year-olds and higher. This has gotten rave reviews. Now let's talk about a couple World War I movies that you might be interested in watching. The first one is actually War Horse that, the, uh, that came from the book. And I'll be honest with you, this is like one of the very few times where I personally think that the movie is better than the book. I, I know, blasphemous. Usually, 99% of the time, the book to me is better than the movie. But this, this movie is really, really good. Um, and like I said, Albert enlists to serve in World War I after his beloved horse, Joey, is sold to the cavalry. Albert's hopeful journey takes him out of England and to the front lines as the war rages on. This movie does a good job of showing trench warfare and the uses of horses in World War I. Um, this, this movie is rated PG-13 based on violence and war scenes, but there isn't really any foul language and the violence is relatively bloodless. Um, it is currently on Netflix, and you can rent it on Prime Video. Next movie is Sergeant Stubby. Um, I just actually found this movie just two years, no, just last year. And Sergeant Stubby is the true story of a stray dog who joins his new master, his new owner, on the battlefields of World War I. For his valorous action, Sergeant Stubby is still recognized today as the most decorated dog in American history. This movie is rated PG. It's less than 90 minutes. Um, if you never heard of Sergeant Stubby, I highly recommend you go to YouTube or you Google or you go to YouTube and you uh, search The Incredible Story of Sergeant Stubby by The Story Behind on YouTube because it is fantastic. Um, you can, if you have HBO Max, it's on there and you can rent you can you can also rent it on Prime Video. The third movie is called All Quiet on the Western Front. Now this this remake this is a 1979 remake of a 1930 
version of this movie. And the main character, as you see in that uh, movie poster, his name's Paul. Um, he's a young German who, along with his graduating high school classmates, enlist in the German Imperial Army during World War I. Originally thinking war would be a great adventure, Paul and his friends discover exactly the opposite. As the war drags on, and one by one, the members of his class are killed in action. Only Paul remains. This movie is not rated. Um, I think it's because it was, I believe it was made for TV to begin with. Um, it doesn't have much, if any, profanity and isn't really graphic. Um, it's free on Prime Video right now, I think with ads. And so is the original 1930 version. But I I prefer this, uh, this remake um, to the original one. And the last one I have for you is 1917. This movie just came out, uh, what, like a year ago? Um, <clears throat> April 6th, 1917. As a regiment assembles to wage war deep in enemy territory, two soldiers are assigned to race against time and deliver a message that will stop 1,600 men from walking straight into a trap, into a massacre. This is rated R, though, so adults will probably need to preview the movie to see if they believe students can watch it. There is a lot of profanity, a lot of violence and gore. Um, personally, I thought this was a, a well-done movie that held my attention the entire time. It actually won, um, I believe, three Academy Awards for like cinematography and things like that. It's currently on Showtime, and you can rent it on Prime Video. Um, yeah, just the first 15 minutes, I was I was just locked in because it was a continuous shot, which was um, really, really interesting. But like I said, it is rated R, so that would be up to the adults. Um, so there you go. There are um, four World War One books and four World War One movies that you might be interested in. If you have a rec recommendation for me, I would love to hear it. So just send me an email um, or if you're on social media, I'm at Mr. Wickham LB. Just reach out. I'd love to hear it. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.